Hello traders, Jay Trade over here, small cap room. I'm gonna show you today my weekend process. So the point is that we have a lot of uh, stocks, NICE, NASDAQ, uh, we also trade futures. So we need to find out the best possibility to make money. And I'm going to show you my process during the weekend to find these stocks. We will use Transpider, which we have a discount link, affiliate link, below in the description <clears throat> and also we use Fimbiz. So you will see my complete scanner uh, process, how I uh, use them, how I tweet them. Uh, another thing, before starting, just wanna shoot out to three members this uh, month. They've been doing incredibly. You can see on my Twitter, jtraderco, uh, I share what they did. So I'm very proud of Kyle. He did this month of April uh, plus 20K uh, $20,000 in profits, trading 90% uh, small caps. Uh, he was one year with me mentoring, so we went over his risk management, his strategy. He became a very good uh, trader. He's a successful entrepreneur in the life. Uh, he's a father, he's a husband, and he's a trader. We have Lehman, almost 10K in profits for all uh, month of April. Very proud of him. He trades generally big caps, yearly mentor, a yearly member. And also we have uh, other traders like uh, Matt. Matt had a small account from Australia. Uh, he's very active on Twitter. He's a funny guy, very good person. Uh, he had an account of uh, 3,500 bucks, double it in one month with small caps. And then we have others like Vancy making an incredible month. We have like Smoky Trades making in one single day $11,000. And this seems all like, you know, the same usual bullshit you always hear here that it's so easy to make money in trading it's not these traders are studying these traders a long time they've been like working hard for what they have it's not that you come in the room day after you expect to make 500 bucks 1000 yeah maybe because if you take one alert you will be like uh, lucky and you will get the trade but we don't do that we teach traders how to trade we teach a job all right, so me, my bear, uh, all the guys, the good traders in small cap room want you to, to give you the best and make you become a trader that you can trade yourself, not following alerts, all right, but being able to recognize the best opportunities. That's the reason why today I'm going to do this free webinar, explain you how I choose my stocks for the week. Thank you very much and let's enjoy. So first, let's go on uh, Finviz. You can use uh, in different way Finviz. Uh, you can have it set for uh, percentage gainers. So this is what I look at every day. I have a uh, specific uh, scan for both small caps and large caps. So for small caps, I look, I look for stocks. Um, they are micro market cap, so under 200 million uh, market cap, price below 20 bucks, up 10% at least on a day, and I wanna see volume. So the volume over here is important, all right? We cannot trade something with two, 300K or uh, 400K, it's a very small volume. We need definitely a volume of at least 1 million, all right? So this will be very important. This is what I do every single day at the end of my uh, trading session. Then we have also unusual volume. So I look for those micro market cap, nano market cap, sorry. So below 50 million. Generally, these are like um, junk companies, uh, what we call like shell. And I want to see volume above 750K. So these, they can give you like the best. Um, the best outcome for the next day, the best volatility you can see over here, 46%, 57%. So this is what I like to watch every single day. And then I go over here, uh, most percentage gains the last week. So this is what I do every weekend, all right? So I look for only price. So I wanna set price below $20. Performance in the week, I want to see at least 30% move. And then I want to see not current volume above 200K, but I prefer always to have volume above 1 million. 
all right? This is, for me, very important. We need volume, we need liquidity in order to be uh, trading successfully. So I then start looking at which stocks can give me a better opportunity for Monday. So we have over here IMC, quoted in the nice, all right? Over here you see the name of the company, you see the market cap, so this is not a micro market cap, which would be below 300 million. This is above 300 million. Then I start looking at the short float, 36%. And this is a very high number. So we know that uh, 36%, almost 37% of this float is short. So owned by short sellers. Institutional ownership, 96%. So it's a very controlled company. Right, means that big firms, I don't know, maybe JP Morgan, we, we would need to see in the, in the filings, uh, have, um, have participation in this uh, company, all right? They own the, the stock of this company. So AMC, we can see downtrend. Um, I don't like to trade so high institutional ownership stocks when I'm trading something that is in a small cap plan. Let's see AMTX instead. Uh, so we can see the news over here, uh, supply agreement. We have a nano, nano market cap, 17 million. So this is really like a junkie company. Uh, we have uh, institutional ownership 10%, so very low institutional uh, company. And we have a, a very small uh, short float. So once I see this AMTX, I started running then, then over here, AMTX on Trend Spider. All right. So I start looking at the stock. I start looking at what happened in the stock in the past. So we can see, for example, uh, let me do like this. All right. So we can see that we had some big volume days. Just look below over here, big volume days big volume days and this 160 level so we would do like just to show you one second we would have this level over here of uh, resistance let me make it another different color all right this is one resistance level then we have another pretty good resistance level over here you can see these uh, peaks and I would do it basically like this. So we have a lot of volume trading in this area, a lot of volume trading traded into this area over here. And this is a nice stock that tends to gap and crap on the same day, gap and crap on the same day, gap and crap on the same day, gap and crap, gap and crap. So, the first day always tends to go red on the day, right? Or close to the lows of the day. And uh, we can see it over here. We can see it over here, over here. All on these big gaps over here, over here, and the last day. So let's look now what we can expect for the second day, right? After big volume. So over here, for example, we have this gap down play and then goes green, gap down play goes green. Uh, over here we have a, a gap up and then fills more, gap down. So generally we don't have that huge amount of downside, the price remains over there. So I'm not really interested to shorting something at 0.80, maybe get 0.60. So not interesting for me to take this, nor for long, nor for short. And this is what I have to do for every single stock that meets my requirements uh, of the scans. So I go to see the next one, Avio. Uh, 116 million market cap. We have uh, institutional ownership. Let's see. Institutional ownership, 27%. All right. Oh, before, sorry, I was uh, wrong. Insider ownership was 10%, institutional 30%. So institutional ownership, uh, 27%. Uh, decent institutional ownership, but I consider strong institutional ownership something above 45, 50%. Um, 
here you can see the news why this started to come in all the way up all right financial results on the 30th and now we go to see our stock AV over here AVO, pharmaceuticals so we can see this likes to extend all right so look this first part of the chart over here traders so likes to extend you can see one two three bars before having that gap down and fail so let's look at over here now we have one two three you can see this is an inside bar so we will look we will look for monday a possible short you can see also the volume we had this peak over here and then it went down we had this peak over here and then the day after we had this um, i would say inside bar because we are basically inside the previous day range so this is inside bar so i will be looking for shorting all right avio on monday if we start having a uh, spike like this and then fail so i would like to see a spike and then a fail of the stock so when i have this i put right away over here you can create avio you put your alerts all right so you can put your watch list let's do it together you go over here you make create new watch list so let's say monday 3rd may all right and over here start putting your symbol in this case i want avio create watch list and we will have our avio so i will be looking avio on monday for a short i will need to see pre-market but i would like to short if we open for example 670 680 a push to 750 stuff and short or if we break down 650 then i will reshort pops all right so i'm just gonna draw what i'm looking over here this is what i do for members so i would like for a spike stuffs and then short or i would like a fail of this support 650 and then i will be shorting spikes so i will be shorting this area this area all right these are the two setups that i'm looking uh, for avio let's see more so we have bp bhat uh, we have a uh, very low percentage institutional ownership junkie company over here um, let's see this stock if we have anything B H A T. all right so we can see that we broke this downtrend line over here with decent volume so i will be looking more for a new long on monday ideally week open so trap the shorts and then push so again what i'm going to do i'm going to go over my watch list i'm going to add a watch list uh, add a stock over here so edit i'm going to put b right so now oh sorry did it wrong over here b h a t and now we can see that we have them both all right so you can switch avio and you can switch b h a t let's look for more we have bkyi so unless we have some big extension over here i'm not interested i also look every single time at the news all right so that's very important we have Cal, uh, not interesting right here, too much consolidation. This is something that I'm very interested in. So we had uh, news over here. New Capricorn data reports, 100% survival. This was the big news uh, three days ago. Actually, now it's Sunday, so five days ago. This was Wednesday. And then we have uh, a big push of 250%. Uh, market cap is 83 million. So this is still like um, not a market cap. We have um, 
institutional ownership 3%, so junkie company, share of float very small over here. Uh, last volume um, was abnormal in the last three days. You can see no volumes over here, and then a huge amount of volume in the last days. So CAPR will be definitely something I will be watching because we had a huge amount of volume in the last days, all right? So you can see these last days, this is the volume, all right, down here, all right? You can see this huge amount of volume comparing to the past. Look, in the past, we had only this big gap with decent volume over here, and then these last two, three days, all right? So what happens over here? Let's look at the past if we can see a pattern, similar pattern to now, all right? So we had some extension. Let's see over here. All right, so they tend to have, let's look together in this area over here. They tend to have a one day push, second day push, inside day, push to that eye and then fail. All right. So again, over here, they tend to push some inside days and then again fail. So let's see if maybe this can be the pattern formation, all right, that we can expect on CAPR Monday. So what can we see? We can see a big strong day inside day, inside day again. So isn't it this very similar? to what we had on the past over here. So big day, inside day, not totally inside day because we are um, having this week below, but still holding this range. So this can be a possible scenario on this big news for CAPR, all right? So we have big day, inside day, another inside day of the first big day. So it's looking for a direction over here. Definitely CAPR is something I'm going to look for. So I'm going to put over here CAPR. And again, you will have it updated over here. So you have your watches created. And Monday, you just need like to switch between one and the other one. Now, let's go to see an intraday over here. Let's go to see, like to always to check uh, stocks on a 15 minutes or hourly chart. So in order to find the biggest support resistance over here. So we have this first resistance in the uh, 11, then we have a second resistance into the nine, and then we have support into the six, and now it's making error. So we have this uh, congestion, right? Uh, this for me is very important because until we have a stock into this congestion, this laterality, I won't be trading. I will be trading it in this zone up here, so let's say if I have an extension, I will short over here. Or if we have, let's say, a fail of this six and then a trap and reclaim of six, all right, so we see new buyers coming, I will be long in it like over here, all right? So these, were the, these are the two options. If instead we will fail uh, the five, 550, we will short pops. So I'm going to look again, and all this, I'm writing it every single day. I'm going to short on an extension if we have this kind of uh, pattern configuration in this era. I'm going to look for a fake breakdown of six and reclaim. So I will long something like this, waiting for a trend line break, and then buying exactly a bar like this in this area over here. Or if we fail the 550, uh, let's say this is our trend going down. Then we have pops, goes down, pops, goes down. I will short this area over here, this area over here, and get the backside. So we have one, two, three possibilities. So when traders ask you, what will uh, CAPR going to do? Nobody can know it. Nobody. Um, maybe some big institutional or insider, they can manipulate the stock. But... Generally, it's the volume price action that we have to look at. And we need to only be reactive. So if I see a pattern forming like this, for example, I know that when it's going to fade, I'm going to short it. If I see a pattern like this, holding support, finding bids, then I'm going to buy the trend line break and higher low, all right? 
This is what I do every single time, every weekend to look for my stocks. Uh, let, let's look one more. Generally, I stay with uh, four stocks. Um, this is pretty choppy over here, uh, around $1. So we will be interested only if we have a push above $1, $1 too long. Uh, chap nothing now ghs nothing so let's leave let's see more cmrx is interesting we traded this in the past day so this can be one to keep uh and the radar and this is what i wanted to show you so we have cracks trader cracks had a beautiful first day we had a beautiful long setup this day over here from $1.50 till four, and then one, two, three inside days. So look, junk company, 25 million, 26 million market cap. Uh, very small, uh, short float. Institutional ownership, 24%. So still low institutional ownership. Let's go to see over here, cracks. This is my favorite for the next week. So I'm going to put right away cracks over here. Edit, you're going to use cracks. Sorry. Oh. Cracks. All right. Now we have it. So this is the trend. Let's see first the daily. So you go over here on your left. Click daily. Let's look at our chart. So what happened over here? Look the past. The past down here. We had. Only this small volume on this spike. Never volume over here. Volume big the last two days, actually uh, four days. So we had this uh, resistance into the 350. You can see we had some spikes, one, two, three, four, but all with very low volume, all right? So it's not important over here. What important is the last five days, four days, all right? So. If we reclaim, now we're going to zoom a little bit. Let's take out some of this stuff. If we reclaim that 350, so if we reclaim basically this level over here, let's say 360, I'm looking for some push to the upside in ideally long. We have only to watch out over here if we have some rejection for sure. So my plan would be actually very simple. So, or short into this area, if we have a topping, if we have low volume, if you have a stuff. So I will be shorting only into this 420, 430, $415 area, this area over here. If we will have a push above 360, the support dip on 360 and holding, then I'm going to long till this area over here. So I'm going to use this as a support to long. If instead we will open again and push into the 350 and stuff again into this area 360, because look how many times we rejected one, two, and three, I'm going to short and look for the backside. Again, you can see that it's not only, okay, I'll buy the breaker, not like that is making a plan is looking in the past what can happen is looking in the past using your setup so i'm looking for a gap and extension i'm looking for a gap dip and buy i'm looking for a backside three setups over here or extension so into this area over here and looking for a short on a stuff so on a bar like this or a hold of this support in case we reclaim 360 and long or a push and when I start rejecting like this bar looking for short. This is what you have to understand from the process that I do every time. So traders, I hope you like my way that I do uh, scans. I've been using this not only on small caps but also for big caps. I was back in 2003, 2004 doing this, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for um, studioborsa.com and .org, probably now they change it. Um, for the Italian market, it was an Italian website. I was working for as a um, newsletter uh, for uh, Finance Online, 
uh, for Italian um, website. So I was doing these analyses every single day. Every single day I was, I was doing this stuff. And they pay out because hard work pays off. So do it every single day. Uh, choose a stock that really have the most volatility, the most range, the better patterns, all right? To learn the patterns and the setups, join uh, Small Cap Room. 20% discount, so get in. Thank you.